Kia ora <coughs> no, I got up nice and early this morning to get my present wrapped as like any mother is last minute um, wonder and wrapped it at quarter past five this morning. So looking forward to seeing my baby's face when I get home. Uh, thank you for having me too. Thank you Sandy. I'm not a great public speaker. I get really nervous but um, I always think if we, we put kids in this situation every day, we ask them to talk in front of pe their peers. We ask them to get up and dance in front of the school or to have a waiata or to have a korero. And so I thought if we're not um, putting our best foot forward and, and modelling the talk we talk, then it's not worth showing up to school. So I said yes. Um, and so thank you Annie and Therese who have organised the day. Um, for health promoting schools, I totally agree with the rebranding. Um, when I first got to Mahora, I got there two and a half years ago, so I'm fairly new within the school. Um, I had Tanya Jeffcoat and um, Sandy emailing about Health Promoting Schools and the Healthy Heart Foundation uh, award that Mahora had currently had, and we were up for a renewal, and I thought, hmm, can't be a healthy heart school because our kids are buying pies every day, they're buying whatever drinks they like every day, chips, anything that they wanted. We had ordered lunches every day and we had or I had already travelled this journey um, because I've actually worked with my current principal at a previous school as well. So we had already uh, walked that journey of getting healthy uh, lunches into schools. Um, so that was where we first started. It was sort of a, a wake-up call thing, saying that we didn't have the practice, although we had the awards, unfortunately. Um, but I really loved, if, if anybody has ever seen the Tūranga Tera leadership model, it is one of the most holistic, you know, that's a word that I've heard today, holistic, uh, hauora, um, and all those beautiful views, and I think Māori do it best um, in the world of relating to the whenua and the world around us, and, you know, clean air, when you look at your um, pipiha. Um, you know, anything like dams and stuff, they actually flow from the, you know, your awa comes out of the mountain and it flows out to sea and it's the circle of life. And if anything interrupts that pipiha flow, it interrupts the, the um, I don't know, the health of the person, basically. And um, we've, I've just come across this Tūranga Tera model. It's not um, new, um, but it has seven whenu and the one that relates best to um, health promoting schools is He Kaitiaki, the Guardian, and it's just protecting and nurturing a caring environment where people and ideas are valued, health, safety and well-being are enhanced and relationships are strong. And I really believe that is um, what, this, what these sorts of meetings are all about and the work that um, teachers are doing in schools. Um, and it's great that you're aligning the rubrics to the Aero indicators because we've just been through Aero. Uh, they are putting out some amazing documents um, that we are reading more and more. Often those documents slipped into schools and nobody opened them. Um, but these ones are so well um, presented. The research is great. The, the case studies are great inside them. So we've used, starting to use the um, era domains as part of our health promoting school. So it'll be great to see the new rubrics when it does come out. Um, with the Aero review that we had, they often used the term the line of sight um, and as, as a board, um, they are ultimate re ultimately responsible for each and every child, uh, the education and the whole order of that child in the classroom. And so the, the six indicators really give that line of sight. Um, coming right from the very top with your stewardship and the charter that uh, schools run by, right down, down to the very bottom. Um, and so these are just some of the things that we have aligned with it. The, so the charter inclusion, <coughs> policies reviewed to see if they match practice. Our policies were great. They read beautifully. They were awesome. But we didn't actually reflect those policies. Um, Proposed scenarios were, for discussion were approved, so the first one that we got underway was the food, was the taking out of um, ordered lunches every day, but we searched for um, healthy alternatives, so we were fortunate enough that a mother at our school had started $3 lunches, $3 healthy lunches. We've also got a local church that drops off eight packaged lunches every day that have a piece of baking 
a piece of fruit and some sandwiches, um, as well as Breakfast Club and, and Milk in Schools and so on, plus Kids Chem. So we've got a range of other alternatives for our whānau, um, but we'll go a bit more into that later on. Um, and then the wellbeing for children's success at primary school, all those documents have been absolutely stunning. Um, and as I say, Eero's doing a, a super job. Um, the leadership of conditions for equity and excellence, so we go down to the next indicator, and it starts at the top. Uh, you won't get change unless you get your principal and board on board with you. It's got to be in your charter and it's got to be in the annual plans because that's where the, that's the engine basically for our schools. That, that, they are the documents that we regularly review. So that was part of the rubrics I said to Sandy. We've got to choose those two um, areas first because without having them in our annual plan and our charter, um, we won't create change. Um, educationally powerful connections and relationships. We had uh, Tanya Jeffcote and Sandy. Um, we had, uh, I proposed to the Hastings District Council for a funding for a trial for our mentoring program. Um, that was part of my um, involvement with the Tamatea Rugby Club, that they hosted a mentoring um, club because they're, we're a Māori club obviously and a lot of the children are disengaging once they get to intermediate. Um, they just don't seem to have the connections to one particular staff member because they quite often have multiple teachers through a day. Um, so that was a, a great thing to see our boys in Term 4 learn about leadership and then in Terms 1 and 2 of their intermediate years they had the connection of their mentor that visited their school, their new schools. Um, the responsive curriculum, effective teaching and opportunity to learn, that is the data gathering and I know somebody said about the um, worrying about questioning your principles, question. Um, I go to the uh, cognition workshops and I've got a great example from Karen. When you go there, if you don't get questioned, you never reflect honestly with yourself. If you are not emotionally charged and um, pushed, then you, you don't go home and actually reflect honestly. So my two examples were when I went to one of the cognition workshops, um, Lorraine said the message that you're giving when you host a breakfast club is that your parents are poor and they can't afford to feed the kids so they're not going to bother because that's your opinion of them. And I was just like, <gasps> what? You know, we've got a breakfast club and we think it's great and heaps of schools have got breakfast clubs and blah, blah, blah. And you, you emotionally challenge, get challenged, um, but that's where your best thinking comes from. And, and are we actually saying that? Or are we using it as a vehicle to connect with our children? You know, all of those things. Um, so we did come back to school and I did reflect and, and have a corridor with Rowan. Um, and the one that I'm going to use for you, Karen, is that um, one of the comments was that a school had, we're talking about healthy homes, and um, how do we as a school promote healthy homes, and there was a school model that uh, connected with their community and the providers of insulation and things like that to promote healthy homes, and that school was the connection, and they were promoting it and trying to get um, schools, uh, houses made healthy and I was just like oh you know we've got a hundred things to do in the day and um, you know I made excuses basically I was a deficit thinker and I went back to school after much mulling because I was emotionally invested um, I reflected honestly and I thought actually we can't we might not be able to do everything but what can we do um, so that was really good and we, I had a talk with Sandy, so that's where those connections outside our, our own schools and the right to question, it doesn't mean you're, you're saying that it's wrong, but we, we call them provocative statements <laughs> um, and, and that creates that emotional charge which creates better thinking and better reflection and then you go and collaborate and that is where strengths come from. That is where your next steps and um, improvement comes from. So absolutely, I think, um, put it a, term it a provocative statement and um, then it's not, you're not feeling that you're challenging authority or anything like that. Um, 
Hey, uh, we changed the bells, um, added brain food, had info and newsletters and, and Facebook. Um, the PLD coming down to professional capability and collective capacity. The PLD provided by Lorraine was amazing. Um, her facilitation is just outstanding. I would recommend her to anyone. I, I actually went back and um, with the support of Sandy asked my principal if she could actually go to a principal's uh, conference. As a DP, um, we don't have quite the power, if you know what I mean. It, it's really the principals that get together and decide uh, the PLD and the budget setting and stuff. We can always push, 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 um, but at the end of the day it, it, is a, it would be great for all of our principals in Hawke's Bay to hear a common message and share for the benefit of all children, not just their school's children. Um, restorative practices embedded rather than punitive. We did a lot of work. I was lucky enough to be part of a uh, three-day and then a two-day hui with Marg Thorsburn, who's from Australia, who um, is a, an amazing restorative practice uh, facilitator. Um, in PLD in Te Ao Māori, quite often our tail kids, as the data shows, is, are our Māori children um, and how do we connect with them, how, do we, how does a teacher that steps out of a completely different world connect with those children and just get to give a comparison, I am, I am, my mum is Pākehā and my dad is Māori so I have two very different families and those families although they love each other and have a mutual respect, are completely different. So we would go from one very Pākehā traditional sit-down party hats at Christmas time with a turkey and you know all the trimmings, and then we would go to Waimarama and where my dad's family was, and we would get money and they would all be drinking, they'd be having a great time, and us kids were having a great time because there was 50 of us and you know we would all sleep marae styles, it wasn't a um, it, it was just different. I loved it because I loved both worlds but to be able to connect to, to both worlds we have to have an understanding um, of each of where our, each of our children come from basically. Um, you know understanding about tikanga, um, place names, you know when you talk about the Manawatu I'll never forget the story about why it was named the Manawatu um, to do lessons so that it's integrated, that we don't have to get in a Māori teacher to teach Māori and then they go away and, and come back the following week. That it's part, it's part of our daily normalised practice. That is how we get our kids on board, that they feel proud of themselves. Um, ru evaluation, inquiry and knowledge building for improvement and innovation. So the rubric and the whole order meetings, we meet fortnightly. Um, so Sandy is our public health nurse, um, myself is DP Senko, Rowan is principal, Andrea Rust is our Swiss and Noel Bryant is our RTLB and we look at how we can best support the whānau that are listed on our um, whole order document. Um, we did lunchtime clubs. Uh, crochet, running club, kapahaka, library pals, extra teacher to play games, ukulele, guitar club, we've had a whole lot added since then, um, but that will be on another slide. <laughs> yep. Um, so how did we go from a deficit thinking school to an agentic practice? Um, when we first started our whole order meetings, we would just have a long list of kids names, long list, and um, Basically, you would come out feeling quite um, depleted, like a, oh, you know, it, it was how do we cope with all of these needs that we have within our whānau and community. Um, so we moved to the Te Pai Mahutonga model, um, which is a Mason Jury model. It's the modern Māori health model, um, based on the same sort of model as Te Whare Tapa Whā and Te Whiki, They're the other models that um, schools have also used because it sort of made us look at ourselves, um, not the list of names on the um, how order document. So we had to look at well, what did our, what, how did we create access to Te Ao Māori for our children? How did we um, create a secure cultural identity? What does that even mean for some of us when we're a majority um, ethnicity? Um, 
what does opportunities to explore natural environments look like. So it was a model that really made us look at ourselves, what are we doing to make a difference, rather than look at this list of children um, that we need to fix. Um, so that was one of the moves that we did. Um, the the right-hand picture is uh, the proposals that I gave to board and I backed it with research and that was where those health and wellbeing uh, aero books came in really handy because they had statistics um, and in the day you know in the realm of data and accountability um, as, as I've heard today it's same obviously in the health realm it certainly is in the education realm um, you have to provide that data to create change um, and then down the bottom, we have to track attendance, we have to know um, who's away and who's not away and so our lovely office lady came up with a tracking system um, that is monitored every two weeks at our hold. I've removed the names but if you hover over one of the little, one of the little things, a box comes up um, and we tracked what sorts of, whether it was toothache whether it was um, earache, whether it was, um, you know, the reasons behind. So we could identify which one of our whole order team was best to assist that whanau in ensuring that their child was healthy enough to come to school. Um, oh, that's that one. Sorry? Did you create it or is it It's a Google sheet, I think it is. Um, and our office lady created it. Yeah, she um, peels off all the absentee data from um, ETAP every fortnight and tracks the children. Yeah, anybody that only the ones that are popping up. We have a um, at ten percent absence rate. They come on our alert button sort of thing, and then at twenty they go to a order meeting because. It's just um, too many. That's included with the medical and things like that. You know, out of 20%, um, 10% could be medical, but what's the other 10%? You just sort of need to keep track. Um, so we went from the deficit to the agentic meetings. We looked at ourselves. We had roving people. So when teachers go out on duty, <laughs> they cruising around the school and. They're basically trying to put out hot spots of problems. Um, you will get engagement from some children. But we offered to um, swap some duties if they wanted to take a passion club, basically. Um, we went to a place-based education system. So when we actually looked at the Te Pai Mahutonga model, it's how did we give our kids access to te ao Māori? Um, do they all grow up in the Hawke's Bay knowing the legend of Te Matauranga Kako? Do they all know where all Tatara Pa is and what, what it is and, and where, you know, what do you do there and what happened there in history? And um, do they know the waka on the um, Clive River? Have they ridden in the waka and, and worked as a team? Um, you know, as teachers we all talk about jumping on the same waka and being part of a team. Um, so we created a place-based education system where after coming out of the school as year sixes they would have known or visited all the um, local landmarks like the juniors go to Pania of the Reef and um, the middles go to Otatara Pa. Like there's a system that they've, as they go through the school they would have visited all those landmarks. Um, because growing up Māori, and if you don't know those legends, you feel really um, whakamā, you feel horrible. Um, and that's part of my feeling is growing up on a, in a bicultural world, and my mum being the main caregiver, and she being Pākehā, I was never introduced to Māori. So, you know, now later in life, I'm attending the Wānanga or Aotearoa and, and trying to um, find my identity. So we need to make sure the kids' identity is in there right from day dot. Um, and again, the mentoring system was designed to create, our, for our boys in particular, which who are the first ones to disengage, um, leadership and role modelling aspects for them. And then relationships, it's all about relationships. A teacher could be in a barn and have beautiful relationships with the kids. They need nothing. They need to be Roald Dahl's Mrs Honey. 
you've all had a Miss Honey in your education system. Um, there's a saying that I don't remember what I was taught, I don't remember what I did, but I do remember how they made me feel. And that is really important at school. If you've got kids that want to come to school, because they've got great relationships with the teachers, you won't have absenteeism. I've never met a um, parent that says, oh, stay home, stay home. It's generally child going, I'm not going to school today, mum. And the mother goes, yeah, okay then. It, that, it, if they want to come to school, they will get there. Um, so the relationships uh, have a huge part uh, to do with it. And Nathan McKay Wallace, he's got amazing, he's um, got amazing research around brain development in the first thousand days, and um, how to create relationships with Māori <laughs> children, how to create relationships with boys, and how to engage. He's amazing. Um, I Y for all our junior teachers, incredible years, um, attendance at the cognition. HPS days with Lorraine Tuffer. And the benefits were we had more time. You know, we are my one of my biggest uh, uh, issues was don't have time, I'm so busy, and you know, we are all time poor. But actually, I don't deal with half the behaviour that I dealt with before. Um, I just I used to have pages and pages of children who were in time out that I would deal with and try and heal the relationship with the teacher or the child and you know do a restorative chat and um, I've be once a week if that at the moment um, of children that I actually have to um, have a bit of a corridor with and um, so I'm actually spending more time in classes now and being prevention better than the cure type thing um, our tamariki have lots of healthy options it's not um, it's cool to have sandwiches, you know, it's because it's just not cool. I've taught in Decile 1 and 2 schools. We're not a fruit in schools, school with Decile 3. Um, but I've taught in, so fruit wasn't cool at Mahora when I first got there. We didn't have a brain food break or anything. But I'd been to, I'd taught at Ebert Park, which is a Decile 1. I'd taught at Mafia School, which was a Decile 2. So they were fruit in schools. Fruit was cool. Everybody ate fruit. The kids loved fruit. I had the healthiest fruit bowl at home and you know we all ate fruit, it was awesome. Kids, when they don't have that all the time, it just wasn't cool. My kid, my own kid, who I'd swapped schools from a Decile 2 and had fruit in schools every day, stopped eating fruit. Um, so we need to think about what sort of message, the fruit in schools is amazing, but the kids that don't have fruit in schools don't um, they don't see it as very cool, if you know what I mean. So he stopped eating it, so I thought, right, I need to do something about this because I need my kid eating a piece of fruit, one piece of fruit in the school day. Um, and water bottles, just get water bottles. You go into some classes, you don't see anything, and then you go into others and you see water bottles everywhere. Um, it's the teacher's positive promotion of anything. A teacher could sell anything to most kids. Um, it's, it's how you sell it and how you model it. Um, and then there's more positive talk about solutions rather than problems. There's nothing worse than going into a staff room and you have teachers barking at you being a, a senior leader and, and this kid's done that and this kid's done that and I say, so what have you done? You know, you, you've got to turn the, the mirror around because they are the adult. So I've got three examples. The, we have had done a multitude of things in, in one of my um, things. When you fill out something that is framed, um, you often leave out all the little arrows pointing in from all the other interventions that have all helped contribute positively. So our healthy eating, the data taken by our senior school over a one week period. So the kids collected data. Um, in the collection of data, when you're asking for data, you can collect data on anything. It's either got to be qualitative, which is your student voice or parent voice or staff voice or things like that, or it's got to be quantitative data, which is your, just your black and white numbers. Um, this was out of the um, 43 orders, 12 were from our Pacifica. Um, population, so 28% of the orders of that week, but our Pacifica population only made seven, made up 7%. 
Uh, 21 out of the 43 orders, 50, almost 50% Māori who made up 38% of our total roll. European had 7 orders out of the 43, so 16% of the total orders, they made up 50% of our roll. And then 3 out of 43 were other ethnicities who make up 5%. So you can see there our Māori and Pacific statistics were over-representative in pies and actually one family of two boys had pies every day that week. Um, they were cheap and they're filling and I know on the, there's, um, there's an email system that goes around for HPS and the korero that's gone on about um, spouting on about lettuce. I don't love lettuce, I hate lettuce, much prefer a pie but it is quality and quantity um, and I enjoyed reading the alternative views and that's, that's the good thing about those email systems. There were a multitude of views and it made me see things completely different from different lens. Um, so we limited our shop lunch orders to one day a week that it's okay, it's a choice, but you only make it every now and then. Um, our Swiss worked with our whanau with healthy lunches, the $3 alternatives were provided um, and all teachers at that stage had a healthy lunch box. What, a lunchbox focus, what constitutes a cool lunch and that went along hand in hand with the brain food and the kids can have any nuts or legumes or a piece of fruit or vegetable and our juniors coming through love it. So anywhere between 9 and 11 they can eat their brain food, it's not a stop thing, um, they can grab it when they want to and they love it. If we have that repeat you know, every year for the six years they're at school they will come through thinking that's just part of what you eat is a healthy balanced diet. <coughs> um, we continue to monitor the lunch boxes now and to top that up through sandwich contributions from a local church and Kai from Kids Can to anybody that needs it. They, it's just laid out on a desk. Um, yeah, I'll leave that. Um, our attendance, so it was hindering some achievement um, in 2014 we started with 270 children, now in 2016 we will end the year on 440, so we've had to battle with um, a growing role um, which can distort our outcomes too. Um, so the Google Sheet was initiated by an office lady which saw her track percentages, uh, fortnight holder meetings with our support agencies, so if there were lots of medical or there were lots of unexplained or there were, you know, depending on the types of um, absentee reasons, that's when each of us decided whether we had the skills to assist that whānau. So in Term 4 we didn't have any data because we didn't have ETAP up and running. Term 4 we had an 88% attendance rate across the school. Uh, of 2014. In 2015 we had a 91% attendance rate and so we're hoping for a, um, an improvement this year so that we can show that our attendance rate is improving slowly but going in the right direction at least. And then our, I put some achievement <laughs> data because for Aero it's all about outcomes and achievement, absolutely. Um, and we can argue that until the cows come home about um, that there is a whole raft of other things but we can do everything if we put our minds to it. We can ensure that they come out with the best literacy skills and the best numeracy skills that those kids are possibly capable of um, but we also want them to be engaged lifelong learners, to have a passion about following their dreams, to be inspired to show resilience in the face of adversity. We have so many anxious children and parents coming through schools that um, we are hoping that the, the narrowing of our curriculum is um, not creating that, that the, we know when they come in at five years old, it's a really fine balance to, in, in ensuring that A, they make the transition positively, um, B, they, they get a social group of awesome friends because that's what matters at five. Um, but that we're also teaching them to the very best of our ability and that they are learning at the rate that they are capable of. So in 2013, our data, we had 39% of our six-year-olds, so the after one-year standard, 
achieving reading, achieving the first standard. And our Māori data was 34%, so two thirds of our six year olds were failing reading. Um, not failing, just not achieving that standard, if you know what I mean. They were all achieving at some stage, but they hadn't achieved the standard. In 2014, it had gone up to 41% and, and Māori matched it. And then we sat down and thought, this has got to change. We can't sit here and say the first standard's too hard, um, which obviously we did say. Um, and y you know, when you are emotionally charged, that is when you do some honest reflection. So we thought, no, we've, we have got to look at us and look at our systems. Um, so we ran the Reading Together program twice over a year, so we got the first influx of parents for the first six months, and then the next influx for the um, second six months. Um, we also at that stage applied for Mutukaro because I'd heard um, great things about it in the last <coughs> Cognition workshop. Um, unfortunately that was no longer available, so we used a lot of the same um, strategies that Mutukaro provides, but we don't have the personnel provided. Um, so liaising with the parents, having more open days in our junior area so that we can grow better relationships. We modelled for them at when they first came into school what reading at Magenta looked like at home. So Magenta is the first books that they go on, so we call it the colour wheel. So when they were moving a little bit further we would model what a yellow book would look like at home and we would model then a green book so that they could see that each book level had different things to do and different skills to provide, but we mo mostly modelled positivity, um, positive affirmations, encouragement, so that they could see that, you know, often parents will say homeworks, you know, you start to get a little bit <coughs> with each other, and, but we wanted it just to be a sharing time. And that one day your child's not going to want to read, that they're going to be tired, and so read to them. Reading with, reading by and reading to, it all, it's all the same. Reading mileage is the, the key thing. Make it an enjoyable time. Um, so in 2015 we got to 66% um, and then our Māori achievement was 60% and then this year we're currently tracking at 76%. So what we currently do this year, which was different to last year, is we created tra trajectories for each child in our um, first year of school, so by this time when they come in in April, by the end of June they should be around about this level, by the end of September they should be around about this level, and if they're not, why not, and what are we going to do about it? So we've got a reading recovery teacher, we've got reading intervention teacher aids, we call the parents in and say, hey, we're going to um, give them a, an intensive block of time for the next month just to make sure that we don't drop the ball for those children. So to get it to 76% so far this year, and our Māori data tracking at 72% we're really proud of because we are watching closely and we are improving our skills and helping our whānau improve their skills. So summary, um, start the journey, you will save time. I know you probably find it hard to sell it to some schools sometimes, but tell them to ring or email a school that has started the journey because it is well worth it. Um, complete the rubrics to get some baseline data. When we first did the rubrics, <laughs> we were low across the board. It was like, eh, take your pick. Um, we chose charter and policies because we, we believed in that you had to start at the top. Um, assemble a great team with like-minded thinkers. You don't need the negative Nancy on, on your team. Um, because it creates a, a little bit of a negative spin, but if you've got some amazing teachers that think positively about everything and anything, um, you can minimise any barriers that are in your way. And that's what I think another cognition was, it was that moonshot thinking, um, what if we, there were no barriers? It is actually thinking about it from that point of view. Um, ensure you have your board, staff and community on board by using research to support change and always having an, an alternative if needed to replace the service. Um, parents don't like change a lot, no matter how awesome it is, how awesome you think it is. Um, you, you do have to do things in, in a methodical way and ensuring that's not too overloading. 
um, multi-pronged interventions, like we've done kai, exercise, environments, relationships, communication, understanding of te ao Māori. Our teachers have been pushed to their limits, um, but in saying that we have better relationships, we have better behaviour, we have better data, um, and so therefore a better working environment. Um, Utilise your school services, ring everybody. I'm on the phone all the time, I don't care who I'm ringing. I'll ring, I'd ring the council and ask for funding, thinking, what are they going to say? No, that's all right. Um, and I actually got funding, and that was awesome. And we have continued to get funding this year because the, re the data showed that it was so um, positively engaging. Um, and gather student voice, all your qualitative data. If, if you don't grab that voice at the beginning of your journey, you won't be able to see the change. Um, and just going back to the lunchtime clubs, I thought I'd put something up there, but I didn't. Um, we had teachers, I said to them, we want you to start a passion because we have got 420 children in our playground at the current time and they're all not wanting to be on the field. They don't all want to be playing with the ball, which is you know, pretty much the options um, in a school. So we've got science club, we've got coding clubs, we've got robotics, we've got art classes. Um, and so a bell goes at half, halfway through lunch because that's when everything was, you know, drifting a little bit negatively um, in that second part of lunch in the last 15 minutes um, was when all our incidences were happening. So they have started clubs so they could actually get off a duty. We were swapping a duty for a passion. Um, and we have got kids engaged. We've got the bike track going and the children that were featuring regularly in, in our data um, have taken up leader leadership positions. So one boy I'm thinking of, he gets all the bikes out for the juniors and helps them hop off and buckle up their helmets. And so we've got the bike, you know, they can bike for the last 25 minutes of lunch or they can go to art class on such and such a day. We've got gardening clubs because it was a way of getting our um, gardens up and running. Teachers tend to be, well, do a gardening unit and they get in, the gardens look awesome for a term and then they just go back to being stinging nettle patches. This is a way of getting it to be sustainable. Um, so that, that has really done amazing um, things for our lunchtime and the engagement of our kids that aren't sporty, um, that, are, that think differently, that want to do different things in their lunch hour. Um, Teacher capability is the biggest thing, that, going back to that Miss Honey um, concept. They've got to love children, they've got to love their job, um, they've got to make their kids feel good. You will get any change if that relationship happens.